I made a fully functional binary adder with only villagers and no redstone. Hey guys, Michael23B here, and yes, the monstrosity we are currently looking at is a giant, automatically resettable 8-bit adder. And if you watched my previous video, I talked about the concept behind this entire thing, where we can take advantage of villagers' pathfinding to job sites to perform more complex binary operations. And I'll get to the demonstration in just a second, but first, let me show you the basis of how this design works. This design is much more reliable than what I was working with in my original video, which would often give wrong answers. And there's a few reasons for that. One is that I was using fence gates. Fence gates completely block the path of the villager. So when you open a fence gate, the villager will often just stand around for a good bit of time before they finally walk to a job site. In contrast, using a trap door does not block their pathfinding, even if the villager isn't able to get past the trap door. This allows them to already have the job site targeted, and once the trap door opens, they will immediately start walking to the job site. The second issue with my original design was that I had two different paths for one villager to potentially walk down, depending on what the closest available job site was. Looking at it now, this is an obvious flaw because, for example, if you look at the Domino Adder by Matt Parker, dominoes aren't going to decide a specific path to go down, but instead the AND output, if true, will disrupt and prevent the XOR output. So basically what this means is that we need to simplify all of the villagers tasks so that they are only targeting one specific job site. To show you an example, here is one of our logic gates, acting as both an exclusive OR gate and an AND gate. If only one of the inputs is on, the tripwire will release the guy over here, and after a bit of time we get an XOR output. If both of the inputs are activated, the same guy gets released for the XOR output, but we also have this villager who will make it through to the AND output and will block the XOR villager from making it to the output. And you'll notice one of the important elements of this design is the use of cobwebs to slow down the villagers to make sure they don't make it to the final outputs until the other villager has had a chance to block them. Of course, this now means we have a working half adder, and by combining two of these and incorporating a carry-in input, we can create a full adder, which can then be stacked multiple times to create our 8-bit adder. And you'll notice that one of the crucial elements of all of this are the presence of beds. Thanks to a suggestion on my previous video, the entire machine is now automatically resettable by making the villagers go back to bed at nighttime and then waking up ready to perform a new calculation. This is way better than my previous designs where I would have to kill all of the villagers and manually place them back in their starting positions. And just as a small note, something important about the reset is that they're able to walk backwards through the gates no matter what, by using the pressure plates or tripwire, but they can only walk forward toward their job site if the calculation permits it. Finally, another important feature is that the villagers never actually reach their job site. They can get within two or so blocks of it, but are blocked by the iron trap door, so they never actually acquire the job. This is crucial, because if they did get the job, they might wander around a bit, and on the next calculation that they perform, they wouldn't be as punctual, because they already secured the job. And like a bad employee, they might think they can just mosey on in whenever they feel like it. Now let's get to the calculations. One of the important things about this design is the activation, or release mechanism. So when I press one of these buttons, the villager here will be queued for the calculation, and I could also press this button for a carry in, and then when I press the start button, this villager will walk into the tripwire, which will release the carry in bit, which we just activated, and he'll also release the villager in the next module because of the tripwire, and then that guy goes on and releases the other bits, and then the chain continues until each module has released all of their bits. It's important to note that it's a timed release, so I'm using cobwebs to delay the release between each module. That way, there's enough time for a carry operation to successfully propagate through the entire machine. And you'll now notice that our simple calculation here is complete, so 1 plus 1 is 2, which is 1, 0 in binary. Now of course, there's no quick way to reset the machine, so we would have to wait for a night time, or I can just set it to night right now. Fast forward a bit.
and everyone goes to sleep. And now we're awake again and ready for a new calculation. Let's do a big number this time. I'm going to put in a one for all eight of our red bits. And just a single one here at the beginning for our blue bit. So what we should see is a carry operation propagating all the way down to the most significant output. Let's start it and watch them go. Awesome, we now have our final output. Now let's reset it again and do some more complicated numbers. Let's put in 0110-1010 for our red number. And 1100-1110 for our blue number. So this will be 106 plus 206, and it has multiple carry operations that start and stop. So let's start the calculation. And at last, we have our final expected output. So 106 plus 206 is 312, or as you can see, 100111000. Great. Now for our final calculation, I want to do something a bit different. I haven't implemented an actual setting for it, but let's try some subtraction as well. We can reuse our same exact machine, and for the subtracted number, we'll use two's complement, where you invert the bits and add one. If you don't understand binary subtraction or two's complement, I'll leave a video link in the description. So let's do 218 minus 87. That's 1101010 for our red number, plus 1010101 for our blue number. And that may not look like 87, but again, that's because we're using 2's complement. Now, let's calculate it. And as you can see, we have that in binary. So for subtraction, we can ignore the most significant bit. And we have our final output of 1 followed by 5 zeros and 2 ones. So I could do some more calculations, but I think you get the idea at this point. We've essentially turned a group of 90 villagers into our own functioning calculator. And if we can do that, who's to say we couldn't build an entire villager computer? 
Thank you guys so much for watching. There will be a world download in the description if you want to try this out for yourself. And make sure to like and subscribe because I have some really big creations coming up that you won't want to miss. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.